Hey guys, I'm Kobe Dev, and you guys are watching a 2D procedural generation in Godot 4. If you guys are just interested in how this works as well, this is totally the video for you. Anyways, without further ado, I'll just quickly explain what noise is, which in the context of programming and procedural generation, basically just refers to random patterns that can be generated using an algorithm. It's often used to add like natural looking variations to graphics, terrain, or other elements in games and simulations. Think of it as a controlled randomness that helps create more realistic and interesting games. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna go through this method that you guys can take step by step that will basically make your own 2D procedural generation in Godot. So the first step, we'll, what we're gonna do, create a root node, add our tile map, tile map, create a new tile set by clicking empty and then new tile set, actually select it by clicking on it and adjust the tile size to whatever size each cell in your tile map looks like. So for me, it's 64 by 64. What well, we're gonna actually drop and drag and drop the tile map resource into here. Yeah, we'll just say yes to this. And as you can see, the base tiles are created and we don't need to modify anything else here. That's the tile map sorted. So our next step is we're going to attach a script to the tile map itself. We'll just delete all of this. I'll just make it bigger for you guys as well. So first we're going to initialize the noise generators for each of the different map features. We're going to be using fast noise light, which basically generates values between negative one and one. So the three values we're going to be doing is moisture. Cool. So if we just click on it, we can actually confirm it is negative one and one, and it's just a noise algorithm. You can use any one of the Godot noise algorithms, but this is definitely the best one. So I'm just going to do Control Shift D to duplicate each one of these because we're going to change temperature, and the last one is going to be altitude. Again, you can leave out any one of these, um, but basically the moisture is going to be our X. Um, offset, the temperature is going to be our Y offset and altitude is going to be used for creating things like oceans. So this could be basically X, this could be Y, um, but moisture and temperature is definitely the appropriate names for it. Next we're going to determine the width of each generated chunk. If your game resolution is like 1980 by 1020, I would recommend doing 65, 64 by 64. But if it's smaller, then I would recommend doing smaller as it will create less lag and less, less space for the um, tile map to actually store the data. So if we're going to create these two variables called width equals 64 and height equals 64 as well. Next, we're going to go back into our actual tutorial. Quickly just save that as main or something like that. And our we're going to add our player. So this can be any sort of player controller you want. This is my player controller. It's very smooth. Um, the velocity, this is what makes it smooth, this line. You can reuse this if you want. Basically, not a player movement tutorial, but yeah, it's also provided to you in the description if you want to use a simple top-down 2D player controller. Anyways, we're just going to drop the player in our main scene. Go back here, and we're going to reference what we just added. So on ready var player equals get parent dot get node and we're going to go player as you can see it's up here however if you have a very complicated however if you have a lot of actual copies so say you're actually referencing it from down here what you would need to use instead instead of doing just get parent a bunch of times you would do get tree dot current scene and then get node player so this is definitely the more robust way to do it although it does require on player being one down from the actual node 2D scene. Next up, if you are interested in creating chunk unloading, we are going to create a variable named loaded chunks. It's just basically going to store the array of positions where um, it does have a tile in. Next, in our ready function, we're just going to go ready. We're going to initialize the seeds for all of these. You may have heard seeds in terms of terrain generation in Minecraft. So when they say uh, a Minecraft seed. That's what we're setting here with moisture seed equals rand. But yeah, we're just going to do the seed value for all three of them. So again, Control Shift D three times. Instead, we're going to do temperature, and we're also going to do altitude. All random. 
circle and then finally going to altitude dot frequency frequency basically just refers to the smoothness of the terrain we're going to be generating one quick visualization of changing the smoothness value is the comparison between these two images you can see the left one looks a lot blurrier than the one on the right or you could also say it looks like it's a zoomed in version of the one on the right whereas in reality we're just changing the smoothness value of the perlu noise which results in larger chunks of land or I guess smoother land. I'm going to set that to 0.01. Cool, in it. and then in our process, delta, we are going to create the variable called player tile position. I'm going to equal to that local to map and then player dot position. So I'll just quickly explain why we're actually creating that. Just basically going to convert the player's position to the tile coordinates. So when we actually place coordinates with the tile um, in the tile map, you can see the bottom left here, these are the coordinates. So we're converting whatever the player's coordinates are to these coordinates that we see in the bottom left, which then we can use to draw our tiles. It's a very useful variable that we're going to define every single frame. For now, that's all in process, but we will add more. We're going to create our main function called generate chunk, and it's going to be passed position. So the position is going to be this position that's going to be passed. Cool. So first, what it's going to do is going to loop through all the values x and y. So for x in width and for y in range height. So obviously changing the width and height is going to change how many times this for loop iterates, um, which will have a big impact on the latency of your game. So we're going to create three variables. Cool. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to generate the noise values for moisture, texture, uh, temperature, and altitude. So first, var moist, we're just going to keep it as a similar variable name, but not the same one, of course, equals moisture dot get noise 2D. We'll just control click on this to see exactly what it does, which it, it returns the 2D noise value at the given position. So the noise value is going to be what you saw before as our jumble of just random black and white splotches and the X and Y position given. It will return either um, from ranges negative one to one of our noise. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply um, it all by 10. So the negative one to one will be remapped to negative one to 10. Inside here is going to be first our X. So pos.x, this is going to be the x coordinate of our player tile position. So um, when you were seeing on here, the bottom, the first coordinate, so let's say negative 10, that's what that value, the value is. It's negative 10 in this case. And then minus width divided by 2. The reason why we're dividing it by 2 is I like to think of it as a diameter. So the width is actually the whole diameter, so 64. And to find the radius, which we want, we want to get the radius around the player in order um, to actually generate the chunk. We're not going to um, double it and create a bigger chunk than we need to. We're going to divide it by 2 to get the actual radius. Then finally, we're adding x. Now, we shouldn't get this x confused with this x. This x, x basically just refers to the x coordinate of the position. This x is going to be looped for each value in, um, in range width. So each time this x is going to be different. So now we're going to basically copy that exact thing and do it for the y coordinate. So position dot y equals height divided by 2 and then y. And we're actually just going to duplicate this line three more, uh, two more times and change it for temp and altitude. Cool. Obviously, you're going to change these names too. So change it to temperature and change this one to altitude. So the next step is we are going to set the cell based on altitude and we're going to also adjust for different tile types. What we're going to think about is if you have a different texture other than a 4x4, you're going to think about remapping the negative 10 to 10 values that this gives us to your 0 to whatever your bottom right texture is. So I'll just scroll out and describe what I'm saying. So our, I guess, lowest value we can get for the atlas coordinates is zero, zero in every single case, no matter what tile map you have. And the greatest possible value in this case is three comma three. If you had to say a six by six, so two more, the last one would be five comma five. So 
no matter what you do, you just want to make sure the negative 10 to 10 gets remapped to 0 to whatever your last one is. In this case, we're remapping it to 0 to 3. So first we'll just call um, user set cell function. The layer is referring to whatever layer is in our tile map. See how it says layer 0? That's just going to be our layer that we're painting it on. If you have multiple layers, we're going to be referring it via index. Since it's we've only got one, we're going to call the zero index or the first index. The next argument is going to be where we actually want to paint it. So obviously you're going to be taking a vector to i coordinates and the x coordinate is going to be the player position dot x. So that's where our player is minus width divided by two and then finally plus x. So it's the same as this. Obviously it's corresponding to whatever value in the noise 2D it is. Obviously, if it returns a value of, say, negative 5 at said x-coordinate, we want to paint it at the x-coordinate that it gives us. Position.y, we're just going to use the same thing here. Cool, so that's our second argument. Our third argument is just going to be 0. It says the source ID. What that refers to is this little number here. See how it's ID 0? We're going to do ID 0. Of course, if you have more things over here, it will be ID 1, 2, 3. So just refer to whatever ID you want to use. Next, it's the atlas coordinates. So this is how we're actually going to decide which tile to paint. Again, when I was talking about um, 5x5 before, I was referring to the atlas coordinates that we can see here. So atlas coordinates being 3,3 3 is going to be our bottom right. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to set it to a vector 2, and we're going to round it, obviously, to the nearest integer. And remember how I was talking about remapping it to 0 to 3. So this is where you would change whatever you write in here. But for me, since it's a 4 by 4, we're going to multiply everything by 3 over 20. We're going to add it um, 10 to it as well. So 3 times moist plus 10. So the negative 10 to 10 becomes 0 to 20. And then times it by 3 is going to become 0 to 60. After that, we're going to divide about 20. So the 0 to 60 gets divided by 20 and then becomes 0 to 3. So you're just going to th go through that same process for your situation. Next, we're going to do a very similar thing for the Y coordinate. So we'll just copy and paste since I cannot be bothered writing that all out again. I'm just going to quickly change this to temp. So at this point, you may be wondering, where does the altitude come into it? So this is our general set cell function. We're going to actually check if the altitude is below zero. Now this value you can change, but what it's going to do is it's going to determine what level the seas are at. So what is the sea level? This is an arbitrary value zero. You can just tweak it to whatever your liking is. But to change the sea level, we're just going to change the this bit of the code. So the x coordinate just to three. In your case, um, whatever x coordinate or the oceans are at. So this coordinate, they're all, the, they all have an x coordinate of 3. If it's not less than 0, so else, we're just going to set this as the logic. Cool, so that's the main, I guess, logic of our generate chunk. Um, it, you can skip to the end now if you are done, if you don't want to do chunk unloading. But I am also going to cover chunk unloading. So how are you going to do this? First, I'm going to create two extra functions, one called get distance. Um, it's going to take in two parameters, so vector or position one and position two. And inside here, the resultant of the two positions, so I guess the line between these two positions, we're just going to call it, uh, I don't know, r equals p1 minus p2. Then after this, we are going to return the square root result, so just r multiplied to the power of two, sorry. That's what the double asterisk does and we're just going to do the x coordinate and then r dot y. Sorry, I forgot the plus in between. Cool, so our next little function is going to be called uh, clear chunk. It's going to be similar to our generate chunk except it's going to just clear all the values. So it's also going to take in position. We're just going to copy this and also copying this one. So it is, as you can see, quite similar. We're going to keep the position the same except what we're going to do is set that to negative one and set this to negative one comma negative one. So what this will do is if we set it to negative one or if we set the atlas, atlas chords to negative one, negative one or the alternative tile to negative one, 
the cell will be erased. So that's what we're going to do in the clear chunk. We're just erasing all the cells. Awesome. And our final function is going to be called unload distant chunks. So it's going to be passed through player position. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a distance threshold. It has to be greater than at least, well, at least greater than two times the width. Basically just limiting visual glitches because it may try to erase something that is currently getting set and it will just flicker. So we're just going to set bar unload dist equals width times two and then plus one just to be safe. And then we're going to loop three or chunk in loaded chunks. So that's our array, remember, at the top that we said we're going to use. And then we're going to calculate the distance to player as dist using our function. So position one is going to be chunk and position two is going to be player position. Going to use this to check if the distance to player is greater than the unload distance. So basically if the distance from the chunk to the player is greater than the unload distance, we're going to clear the chunk. So clear chunk and the position is going to be called chunk. Cool. And loaded chunks dot arrays. We're going to also erase chunk. If we go in here in the logic here, after we've actually set the cell, we want to go if vector if the vector two coordinates pos position x and position y. So the player position, basically, if the player position is not in loaded chunks, we're going to append it and append same thing. So vector two position x, position y. And finally, to make it all work, we need to update, update our process. So we're not actually calling any of the generate function, um, generate chunk function. So underneath here, we're gonna go generate chunk, put in our player tile position. And then after that, if you want to make sure the unload distant chunks works, also going to call, call unload distant chunks and put in player tile position. So that's all the tile map scripting that you need to know. And we're just going to run it, see how it looks. Oh yeah, since we haven't actually run it before, we're going to select the current one since it is our main. So you can see here, procedurally generating. The oceans are generating quite often. So that's because our altitude is set to zero. So around half the terrain is going to be oceans if it's zero. Um, and it just looks really good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like. Um, if you want to save this for later, just save to watch later, I guess. Um, yeah, but if you want to see more content from me like this, um, I'm also working on my own game as well. Feel free to subscribe. You'll see some really interesting stuff, hopefully, coming out soon. Um, I say hopefully because hopefully it's interesting, not hopefully that it's coming out soon. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's all for today. Nothing yapping about. See you guys later.